to the uh, West Bridgewater School Committee meeting for February 10th, 2020. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All my silence. Thank you. The listing of matters on the agenda are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed, in fact, may be discussed, and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. This meeting is being videotaped for cable. Uh, we'd like to welcome our student rep, Maggie McCafferty, tonight. Welcome, Maggie. Can I stand? No? no. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You're good right there. Uh, we have some recognitions, um, the, uh, the Globe Key Art winners, um, Mr. Bodwell. Oh, minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Jeez, I'm going fast. Uh, we have to uh, approve the minutes from our January 13th meeting. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Mr. Bodwell. Oh, he's going so fast, I can't even. All right, I want to first thank Mrs. McMurray, our art teacher, one of the art teachers, for submitting the works. I just have a little write-up that she gave me to read. It said, the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards are the nation's longest-running and most prestigious recognition program for creative teens in grades 7 to 12. This year, West Bridgewater submitted 10 works of visual art to the Scholastic Awards. Four works were recognized. West Bridgewater received two honorable mentions, one silver and one gold key award. The Silver and Gold Key Award winners will be recognized in an award seminar at Tufts University on March 14th. Our Gold Key Medalist will work, work will be on display at the Regional Exhibition at Tufts University March 14th to the 22nd. It will move on to be uh, reviewed at the national level in New York City by panels of creative professionals. National medalists selected by his panels will be announced uh, Monday, March 16th. So it's quite a prestigious honor for these students, uh, it's great recognition, uh, and they deserve a ton of credit. Our kids do great work. Um, it's wonderful to see as you walk through the building, so they should be very proud. So we've got the certificates here. I know a couple are not here due to being out of school or for work. Uh, our gold key winner was Jamie Childs. She's not here, but you can see her artwork up there. Very impressive. Uh, silver key, Jasper Blumenthal is also not here. But our honorable mentions, we have Caitlin Caprillion. Come on up. Congratulations. Congratulations. And our other honorable mention, Mackenzie Reynolds. Yay. Congratulations, Mackenzie. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. All right. Oh, go. Oh. can get home and uh, study. Mm -hmm. no. or, uh, do some more artwork. Do some more artwork. <laughs> <laughs> no. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. You too. Thank you. And we're back. Uh, superintendent's update. Okay, I have three updates for you this evening. One is the school choice update. As you know, at your last meeting, you uh, voted to continue our school choice program. 
um, and we have been getting applications ever since. The um, due date for applications the last day is February 24th, and as of today, hot off the presses, we have 102 applications for school choice, you know, K through 12, so um, all grades. Um, almost the next day, we had like 40, 40. the first yeah. day. So wow. um, people want to come here. That's great um, anecdotal evidence for us that we're doing something right. And um, so what will happen now is there'll be a 24th, once all those applications are in, then I take a look at the March 1st uh, SIMS data for our enrollment projections for next year. And we'll start doing lotteries at different grades and accepting students. So letters will go out after the 1st of March. Um, either way, whether there's not enough space or you're going into a lottery or you're getting picked. The only ones we'll hold off on are kindergarten and first grade um, because we um, first grade, we, we tend to get um, a lot of move-ins um, in first grade and kindergarten would want to go through kindergarten registration and see what the actual numbers are of our kids first. So we usually hold off until June for those. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No. Okay. <coughs> um, budget process FY21. So you know we scheduled an actual budget hearing that will go through the budget with a presentation. We'll look at it line by line as a group make suggestions um, if there are any questions or comments um, we'll go through that and that will be really the only thing we do that night on the 24th that was an extra budget meeting then um, if we need to we'll make changes or adjustments come back to our March meeting and you'll actually vote on the budget that you want to put forth to the town on the 18th in the evening, we'll present our budget to the selectmen. On March 19th, in the evening, we'll present our budget to the Finance Committee. And then I would say probably within, within the next month, we usually know how they've um, budgeted the entire town and, and if we have to make any cuts or if we're good to go. And the town meeting has been moved up to May 18th at 6 o'clock usually in June and in the past it started at 7 but a survey went out mm -hmm. with the census and a lot of people got back and they want an earlier meeting so May 18th at 6 o'clock and that's when we'll go through all the budget so we'll probably because of this move up um, now that we know start our budget process earlier next year or someone will start our budget process <laughs> earlier next year and uh, because the town meeting's earlier. So, any questions on that? So we usually have a school committee meeting right before the town meeting, so we won't this year because our meeting's on the 11th. Well, what we could do is, you know, we can think about that. We could actually move our May meeting to the 18th. And meet at Although, it's now that it's at 6 o'clock, we yeah. may not want to do that. Right. No. It was usually at 7 and we had that meeting. So we might just keep it because it's a different yeah. time. Yeah. If it was at 7, we could probably do that. But it would probably make sense to just keep it the way it is. Um, NEASC update. As you know, we're up for our, our decennial um, accreditation this year. And the high school folks... Mr. Bodwell, Mrs. Page, all the coordinators, the teachers, everybody has been working um, diligently to get everything in order and put a schedule together for the visit. The visit by the accreditation team is March 16th, 17th, and 18th. And this, this year's process is a little bit different. They, they changed the way that they do the visit. so. We actually don't have as many people coming to visit. Usually you have a team of 14. I think we have a team of eight, right? Um, two years ago we had a collaborative conference and they came and looked at our goals and helped us put together an action plan over the two years that we've been working on. But it's similar in that there are standards that need to be followed and they 
look and see how well our middle senior high school adheres to those standards. And then once they go through all that and put all the data together, they give us commendations and recommendations. The last time we had a visit, the recommendations revolved all around our old building and how it's really hard to do this because your building needs help. Your building. So um, because of that, you know, or partly because of that, we ended up with a brand new building. So I think they'll be pleased coming in this time and looking at those indicators and standards for facility. However, you can't blame the building for anything now, so they'll be <laughs> looking much more closely in all the other things like curriculum instruction and, and assessment and culture and those types of things. I'm sure it will be fine, but um, we can't blame things on the building this time like we did last time. <laughs> so, um, but it's, it's a great process. <coughs> It's great professional development for teachers because you really get to look at our practices and what we do and how we align to, to their indicators and standards. In West Bridgewater, we have been accredited since 1949. And um, so I anticipate that we'll con continue that accreditation. One of the things that they like to do is meet with school committee members obviously to give input and that meeting is set for the first day the Monday so that's the 16th I believe the 16th at 3 o'clock um, if you can make it that would be great as many as possible I know sometimes not all five members can make it when it's during a time that you might have to work but if you could carve out the time for that that would be much appreciated because they like to talk to the school committee about leadership overall but also, one of the big thing is resources, and you, uh, you oversee the budget and policies, but especially the budget piece. So they like to talk to school committee. So if you can try to carve out the time for that, that would be appreciated. It will be right here in the high school. So, you know, Mr. Bodwell, anything else you want to? No, we're just looking forward to showcasing what we do here. We're very proud of it. We're very proud of our kids and our teachers and our community. Okay, so we're looking forward to having people come in to the Flatworth Conference. It was really a really uh, worthwhile experience for us. We got some great recommendations and accommodations. So we're hoping the same. Our goal is to get good feedback and move forward. Well, they'll see everything. I mean, they, they'll go into classes and observe. They'll go to club meetings or um, they'll meet with kids during lunch. And, you know, there's a lot of different things. So they... they collect evidence from all the things and like I said they spent three days here so um, but it is, it is a good process and the way that they've improved the process over the past several years I think is much better because instead of being a process where they would come in and say we got you we got you we got you it, it's more of a process that we're going to work together on your improvement plan how can we help you improve and I think we found that out already that so Thank you, Dr. Oakley. You're welcome. Our student rep effort, uh, representative uh, update is uh, Maggie. Um, for the Spring Street School, uh, January was more of a quiet month at the Spring Street School. The school has been gearing up for online kindergarten registration and developing a process to ensure it's family friendly. They started a colleague learning walks between kindergarten and first grade in both the Spring Street School and the Roselle. It's truly been a great experience for the teachers. They've had a few PTO events, including Doodlebot, and Tide Pool, which is also a huge hit with the students. Last but certainly not least, they've had their first annual 100th day of the school celebration with the big brothers and big sisters from the Howard School, as it is the 1,000th day of school for the fifth graders. It was a great time had by all. The Roselle had their pride assembly on Friday. It was great to see so many students recognized for showing respect to their teachers, classmates, and themselves. They are focusing on the trait of kindness during the month of February. This month, Howard and Roselle engaged in high-stakes penny wars to raise money for firefighters and animals in Australia. The kids really worked hard during the two-week competition that ran from January 21st to January 31st. The Roselle raised $4,300 and the Howard raised over $3,000. Together, the grand total was $7,355. Roselle students really enjoyed the friendly competition as the teachers had students sort, count, and roll some of the coins on Friday that turned into an authentic math activity. As the winning school, the Roselle gets to see Mr. McLaughlin get pied by a student leader this week. 
Jumping right into the Howard with a little bit more detail regarding the 100 and 1,000th day celebration between the kindergartners and fifth graders, kindergartners will be helped making 100th day, day of school t-shirts, which will be stored at the Howard until they're in fifth grade. And when they get the t-shirts back, they will go back to the, kin to the kindergarten um, to help the, that year's kindergartners decorate. Both the Howard and the Spring Street teachers are super excited for this program. <coughs> And then in response to the abduction of the Springfield student several weeks ago, our D.A.R.E. officer, Officer Thaxter, scheduled a self-defense for the sixth graders with Plimpton D.A.R.E. officer Dana Smith. Students did a wonderful job. In the Middle Singer High School, the eighth grade students once again did a wonderful job with National History, History Day project. It was great to see all the projects in the cafe with as lots of efforts were put into them. The middle school students had a no homework weekend this, <laughs> this past weekend, and we um, we hope they enjoyed it and took advantage of that time. Winter sports are in full swing. It is great to see so many student athletes excelling. Registration is now open for spring sports through Family ID. The debate team continues to be very success successful in competitions against various schools. And it is great to see many students taking advantage of yoga offered during Power Blocks. The Distractology trailer was on site last week to provide students with simulations on distracted driving. Many students have taken advantage of this and reports are extremely positive. And lastly, February is Random Acts of Kindness Month. Students are being challenged to go out of their way to help others. That's great. Thank, Thank you, Maggie. Thank, Thank you. you. Great job. Okay, on to business. Uh, the uh, first <coughs> issue here on business is kind of uh, a little bittersweet, but uh, as we say goodbye to Dr. Oakley in the next few months, um, the committee has reached a um, three-year contract beginning uh, July 1st, 2020 with um, Principal Mr. Mark Bodwell to take over for uh, Dr. Oakley. Uh, Mark will be um, signed on for a three-year term at $162,000 per year. Um, we're very excited about this, the committee we met, uh, and you know we're all looking forward to this, Mr. Bodwell. Um, Dr. Oakley, thank you for everything you've done for the, the town of West Bridgewater, and especially the school system. So as we move forward here, you know, great, we're all looking here for great things as we go forward. So uh, this is actually a voting issue for us, so um, if we could have a uh, motion to accept Mr. Bodwell's contract as uh, presented. I'd like to make a motion to accept Mr. Bodwell's contract as presented. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, our 2020-2021 school calendar. So the school calendar, um, every year you get it in February, you'll vote for it in the March meeting. Um, if we now made the decision last year that we were going to return to school every year before Labor Day, so um, that will be the Monday before for teachers, Tuesday, Wednesday, and a half day Thursday for kids, and then the Friday off before Labor Day to give that weekend. I think um, this was mentioned when it was discussed by the school committee about going back to school before Labor Day and about we do three days then four days and five it kind of eases you back into the school year and a lot of people noticed that and liked that idea of it so um, they're going to keep that. Some of the changes of vacations so Christmas is on a Friday and that means uh, so we put in that they would obviously have Christmas Eve off and it's a half day before. Um, the other thing is the 12 days, you can't have graduation more than 12 days um, before the last day of school. So if you count back, it's exactly on the 12th day. So it would be the Friday night of Memorial Day weekend for 2021, <laughs> for 2021. So those are the most of the changes I just asked you that if you have some time and want to take a look at it there's a lot of detail that goes into this calendar with the half days and um, uh, conferences and things like that so if you could take a look it's hard because Kim's looking at it we try to look at it. but when you look at something with so much detail for so long sometimes you miss something so if you get a chance to look it over and if you notice anything or if you want some changes to it or you have any discussion, please let us know and then you can vote on it next month. Great. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, unified track, Mrs. Hamill and uh, Mr. Michael Azik. Good evening. Um, so we are coming here with some exciting news, uh, something that we are going to try to pilot this year, hope to pilot this year. Um, if you've seen, you know, the last couple of years through the Special Olympics, we've got more and more districts that are involving themselves in unified sports. Uh, they do offer three, basketball, football, and what was the third one? Bocce. Bocce, yes. Can't forget about that. Uh, and so they do offer three sports. And so it started last year when I was approached about this from our CPAC chair. And I believe we met with Special Olympics last year. Molly, I think you were involved in that meeting. Um, and at the time, we just thought it, it just was not the right time. Uh, Jen just came on board. I was new. We just needed to really kind of get our feet wet before we kind of involved in expanding programs. Um, so this is now the second year we kind of looked back into it. Um, with Jen's collaboration on my side with uh, Mr. Bodwell, we kind of met again with the Special Olympics and looked at what can we do as a district uh, to kind of provide inclusive athletic opportunities for our kids with intellectual disabilities and kids without. Um, so just to kind of go through a PowerPoint of, of hopefully some questions I, I kind of tried to anticipate that you would ask tonight. Um, it kind of goes through what unified sports are, the financial implications, and again, kind of what really is it and how does it impact our school and community as a whole. Um, so just to kind of go through our bullets here, you know, what it really is, is it's including students with intellectual disabilities and without in competitive athletic events. Um, it is housed on the MIA roof, so it's a legitimate athletic competition, uh, legitimate season. Uh, and in this, people of similar age and abilities, you know, they, they practice together, they have meets together, in this, in this case track and field, um, and then basketball, of course, games. But uh, again, we're really kind of focusing on track and field as we feel kind of the different types of events would be better suited for our students' needs at this time. I'll go to the next one. Um, so this is some j data, I'm not going to go verbatim, but this is some data taken by uh, the Special Olympics uh, supporting kind of the turning point in some students' lives and how it impacted them through surveys that they were given to those districts that were involved. Um, so you're looking at, you know, 97% of high school seniors say that uh, unified champion activities are cha uh, changing their school for the better and so on and so forth. Everything's above 85 to 100% in their satisfaction and kind of in how they were and how they interacted with, you know, unified sports. Um, so that's just a little bit of data. And so this is a video from, it's a, a district that's kind of in my neck of the woods. Uh, they just became a banner school, which is kind of a, a champion school. And what they do is they exceed certain expectations and certain tasks that they have to do for a number of years. Um, so I think this is their third or fourth year with Special Olympics. But um, they really are the paramount school that's really leading the way in this area. So I just figured I'd play a video that they created this year when they became a banner school. Uh, 
I saw something on Channel Whatever in Rhode Island about yeah. awards being given out in Rhode Island at the end of the year. There's something called Unified Sports. Do we have something like that? And I and they said, no, I don't even know anything about it. Kristen being, Kristen decided she was going to take off and find out everything she possibly could about it. At first we were a little apprehensive that we wouldn't have enough students to join. The first year we had 19 students on the Unified Track team and now probably this year we'll have close to 70 students. So it really took off from there. To be honored as a national fair school, um, we're very proud. It's just been amazing. It has been an amazing program, and I think it's unified the whole town. I think the better is the skipping to, to from, from the house for incorporated would be so cool and really awesome from its inception. This program has brought great distinction to this high school, unsurpassed. And uh, just speaking retrospectively, there is no doubt in my mind. It is the number one accomplishment of the time I've spent as athletic director here at Seacon High. In 2017, Seacon High School was named a unified champion school. This year, it will be named a national banner school. It's time to celebrate and raise the banner! So the video really was just something so you can actually see it. And, you know, because, you know, there's some districts around here that do do it. Um, it's just, I, I think, helpful for you guys to really see kind of the magic that it creates within buildings, within communities, within districts. I mean, we're a fully inclusive district. Um, we've done some really tremendous job when it com comes to inclusion work. Um, but this is just in addition to kind of what we're doing currently. And I think a collaboration and partnership between the athletic department and the special education department, I mean, I mean, we have students that really will benefit from this, both students with intellectual disabilities and students without. And it just adds to our already really impressive climate in the building as far as when it comes to inclusive education. So that was a great video. Now we're going to go into finances, of course. Um, so. I just wanted to kind of break down what this looks like uh, from the you know, financial standpoint. So Special Olympics, they have kind of a three-year plan. The first year, they, get a, they give a $2,000 grant. The second year of the program's inception, they give a $1,000 grant. And the third year, it's self-sustaining. So uh, we kind of went through um, kind of what the actual expenses are from coaches to transportation to uniforms. Uh, we're going to have some volunteer officials. Um, and then from that, you know, some equipment's being donated to us. So if you look there, outside of the grant, outside of uh, our C Inclusion Mad CPAC, just recently voted on in, in donating uh, the money to purchase our uniforms at 519000 uh, So the expenses really will be for this year for track and field. Sorry, $519. Yeah. $100,000. <laughs> oh, it's a couple of zeros, really, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wish they had that. Um, <laughs> um, and so really the expenses come down to coaches, uh, transportation and equipment, and again, that's provided. So really, just transportation and um, coaches. And so after everything all said and done, the donations with the grant, we're looking at $1,500 on the district's end uh, of what we need to provide. I'm going to the next one. Yep. And then with that, um, there actually, uh, U.S. Department of Education Office of Civil Rights did come out with an updated law. Uh, back in January 2013, um, of course, as we know, all students deserve the right and have the right to participate in any extracurricular activities or athletics. Um, but this, with the updated law, what it does is provides and, and, and speaks to expanding current opportunities uh, within our building. So it's supposed to expand beyond our athletic opportunities for students with disabilities specifically. So this feeds right into kind of what the U.S. Department of Office of Civil Rights is kind of requiring districts to kind of look into and consider and then this is kind of what it looks like so the season is actually it's a modified season uh, it's about five weeks in length uh, six if you, they go into the states and sectionals um, and so with that they have two home meets and two away meets 
Um, and it kind of starts, if you see there, so the schedules are published. Uh, there is a coordinator that does kind of the scheduling with our athletic director here. Um, and going through the dates, the practices start at the end of March. Uh, the meets will start the first week of April. And that kind of goes right into, you know, a couple of meets and, you know, right up into sectionals. Uh, and then from there, they qualify, they would go then to states. So you're looking at overall from really March to May, so two months from start to finish, nuts and bolts. And that's it. Do you guys have any questions, comments? Do you have anything to add? I'm sorry. I agree. I, agree. Right. Awesome. I think it reaps in the benefits beyond anything for the community, kids, staff, everyone. I look forward to it. I'll, I'll volunteer my time. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm truly looking forward to it, too. And just, um, I am working with boosters as well. I'm going to look for, a, a, you know, reach out a little bit to them as well. I'm meeting with boosters tomorrow, and they have a meeting uh, Wednesday. So I'm going to ask whether it's, uh, transportation or uh, coaching stipend, um, looking for some relief there too um, financially. Thank you awesome. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Included, inclusion matters update, Mrs. Smith. Okay. In January and February, Inclusion Matters partnered with two other CPACs to host two workshops on the life of a student with special needs after high school. These workshops were held at the Bridge Center in Bridgewater and were very well attended. In March, parents registered with Inclusion Matters to meet with educators and family support folks to learn to read and understand their IEPs better. We are excited to offer this service to parents in and beyond our district. Our next workshop, open to the public, will be on Wednesday, April 8th in the Learning Commons here. Uh, Lisa Drennan, founder of Merge Consulting, will be joining us to talk about including students with disabilities in sports and recreational opportunities. Um, Inclusion Matters encourages you to bring your child's coaches, camp counselors, and other recreation staff with you to this workshop. Thank you very much. Uh, Middle Senior High School Program of Studies, Mr. Bodwell. All right, I'm excited to bring to you the proposed changes for the 2020-2021 uh, Program of Studies. Uh, you have the changes, and I believe you actually have the Program of Studies in your packet. Uh, the first one has to do with uh, adding in our core values, our Wildcat pride, uh, passion, respect, ingenuity, determination, and empathy. Um, I provide some supplemental information to provide you with information in terms of how do we demonstrate in the classes. When they came for our collaborative conference almost two years ago, they said, we can sense what your core values are, but they're not uh, written down, they're not recorded. So well over a year ago, we started with a committee to kind of name and identify those core values. Uh, and the idea was to identify core values that are going on every day in the school, going in the classrooms, uh, within the school community. So you can take a look at that and see what those core values are and how we demonstrate them, both in academic areas as well as within the school. Um, a new section we've added is some honor society information. We have information in our student handbook, but we also felt it was important to place that in the program of studies. So whether it's National Honor Society, or the French or Spanish Honor Society, or the Tri-M Music Honor Society, it'd be helpful to be able to look at what the criteria is for each of those. Uh, and one of the changes that is noted there is in the National Honor Society, going from a 3.48 an unweighted GPA up to a 3.6 GPA. Um, kind of raising the level of achievement as one of the four areas they look for for qualification into the National Honor Society. You have, you have scholarship, you have leadership, you have character, and you have service. That wouldn't be uh, implemented until the next this new freshman class comes through, so they're all aware of what those expectations are. Okay. Um, uh, we um, added in information about the Massachusetts Seal of Biliteracy, something we've been doing now for a couple of years, um, looking at the um, making sure our students get the opportunity to be biliterate. Uh, they do that through taking an exam uh, and also looks at their proficiency level uh, on their MCAS tests. Um, within each, when you look at our program of studies, each of the courses are listed, and we've identified, each teacher has identified for each course, three core values they're going to focus on. Our goal is, as a vision of the graduate, that they'll be exposed to all these core values over the eight courses they take over the four years of high school. So there'll be a smattering of the 
different core values for each, uh, each course that they take. They're not going to get them all in one course. It's going to be an accumulation of all the courses over time, similar to our academic expectations, and our graduation requirements will create a strong uh, graduate of West Bridgewater Middle Senior High School. And then finally, we have uh, three new courses that are listed. Uh, I think our staff have done an outstanding job creating new courses over the years that have engaged and motivated students. The new courses have been rigorous, but they've also been, uh, lots of kids have signed up for them. In our health department, we have a new course, Sports Medicine and Kinesiology, which is a semester course, um, which will be, I think, a real uh, high interest course for the kids. A lot of kids who want to go into that field, it'll be very much of an introduction to that. Uh, in our math, uh, math um, area, we have data science offered at the CP and the honors level, allowing kids some real world experiences using math. Uh, again, it's becoming majors in, in colleges and universities. Uh, a great thing to expose these kids to, especially the kids that are on, maybe on the calculus track, but maybe they're on the statistics track uh, through math. And then finally, uh, which I believe will be our 14th AP course, we're looking at AP Computer Science Principles, um, which is a, a course that's going to give them an opportunity to get into computer science. It's not as much coding as the AP Computer Science A is, uh, but it gives them a more well-rounded look at computer science and a lot of different fields within that. Any questions? I had a question about the, uh, raising the GPA for the National Yes. Study. Is that across the board, or like what are the, I guess, requirements in other districts? Other districts, it varies. The national standard has to be at least an 85. Um, most districts do exceed that. Uh, it varies. We have looked at different districts. Some use a weighted GPA of over a 4. Some have a 3.9. Um, some are, you know, 88. Uh, the weighted GPAs, when you look at them numerically, are over the 90. Um, so some could be as low as 85, but each district does get to, to look at that and make their own decision. Okay. You're welcome. So in relation to that, could that just be noted in here that the change is as of graduating class? Absolutely. Uh, yep. I can't do the math, but 22, <coughs> 23. 23 is our freshman, so 24, starting with the class of 24. Okay. Yep, we can absolutely put that in there. I think that's only fair yeah. to the kids who are not only in, but the students who are freshmen now looking at their grades and if they think and they know that if the 87 was the baseline, to know it's now a 90 would be fair to yeah. give them that opportunity. Everybody good? Uh, this is a voting issue for us, so um, uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, the program studies with the, the change that Mrs. Smith uh, requested. Uh, can we have a motion? Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Thank Bartlow. you. Thank you. All right. Uh, policies for review. Policies G, H, and L. <coughs> Mrs. Sullivan? Mrs. Hume? Oh, no. Nope. I can speak to that. Um, mm -hmm. So Kim sent, emailed you out today links to um, Section G, Personnel, Section H, Negotiations, and Section L, Education Agency Relations, which are the um, latest three sections that Mrs. Sullivan and I finalized. So we just ask that you review them and let us know if you have any questions, um, and we can vote to adopt those um, at our next meeting. And also in the email was just a link um, that uh, you can use to get to all the policies that we have approved so far. So if you need um, one spot to get all the ones that we've done. Um, and that leaves us with three sections left. Um, I, instruction, J, students, and K, community relations. All right, again, thank you, you so much there. for the work. That's perfect. <laughs> A lot of work. <laughs> the end is near. Thank you. Thank you. OK, uh, warrants. Uh, warrants subcommittee report, Mrs. <coughs> Sullivan. Yes, the following, following warrants were issued and paid for fiscal year 2019. Uh, under bill warrants, there were four, dated January 16th, 2020, in the amount of $123,393.82. A bill warrant dated January 23rd, 2020, in the amount of $56,094.50 and then a bill dated uh, bill warrant dated January 30th, 2020, 
in the amount of $24,156.17. And the last bill warrant dated February 6, 2020, in the amount of $55,869.50. And there were two payroll warrants, one dated January 24, 2020, in the amount of $465,048 and 58, I'm sorry, 56 cents. And then the last is dated February 7th of 2020 in the amount of $476,281.49. As always, excuse me. Bless excuse you. you. All that money. <laughs> <laughs> Took the wind right out of me. We have, right, Kath? <laughs> <laughs> As always, all warrants are public record, and once they are signed, they are available in the Selectman's Office for review. Thank you, Mrs. Sullivan and Mr. Holden. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Flynn, for the recognition. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the public forum. Members, wishing, uh, members of the audience wishing to address the committee may do so at this time. Audience members are reminded that personnel issues or issues that would violate student confidentiality cannot be addressed during the public forum. Do we have anyone? Uh, I know that we have our uh, esteemed state senator, Mr. Timothy, here tonight. Would you like to uh, come up and uh, speak, Mr. Timothy? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. I don't know if I can talk Mr. Holden sneezing, but. Uh, <laughs> I'll try to keep it. I'll give my best shot to keep everybody's attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Flynn, Mrs. Collins, Mrs. Sullivan, Ms. Yom, Dr. Oakley, and Kim, and of course, Maggie. That was a great update that you gave. Congratulations. I can see why you're the student representative. Uh, to Mr. Bardwell and Dr. Oakley, uh, congratulations on your Globe Key Art winners. What a wonderful reflection of this wonderful school system. So, congratulations to our winners. And uh, as Mr. Flynn, you've so aptly put it, a bittersweet moment. With, the name, with Dr. Oakley, of course, we talked about your plans for next winter and beyond. Congratulations to you, Doctor. It's been great working with you and Mr. Bardwell. I've seen what a wonderful institution you run here. So I know what is a great school system will be in wonderful hands with you. It's a wonderful handoff. And uh, lastly, I would, uh, if I may, uh, talk, we are in budget season now. Of course, as you alluded to earlier, Dr. Oakley, in the legislature, we've embarked upon our budget process with the Ways and Means Committees in both the House and Senate are about to and poised to conduct hearings all around the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, the House of Representatives will have their budget exercise annual in late April, and the Senate will have our budget exercise in late May, leading right into Memorial Day Friday. Uh, from there, there will be a, what's called a conference committee where the House and Senate have three conferees uh, appointed by the Speaker of the House and the Senate President to uh, merge it into a mutual document. So I would just encourage everybody, any suggestions or requests in the weeks and months ahead, Please reach out to myself personally in my office. Uh, my district director, Keisha Adakwa, is right in the front row there. Uh, but we have a wonderful team, and obviously I and we will never forget that we work for the people of this great town. It's a great privilege, privilege to work for the people of West Bridgewater and with people like yourselves. So I thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, look forward to working together in another fiscal year. So thank you all very much. And congratulations, Mr. Bardwell. Congratulations. And Dr. Oakley, thank you very much. Mr. Flynn, thank you. Thank you to the members of the committee. It's great to be here. And Maggie, again, that was outstanding. Thank you. Okay, our uh, district-wide announcements. Uh, February 12th is a half day for the pre-K. Uh, oh, half day pre-K through 12th. It's uh, February 17th uh, through the 21st is uh, winter break. District meetings, uh, no school. Uh, school council meetings, the Howard School, March 9th, 245 p.m. in the Howard Conference Room. Uh, the PTO meeting, February 25th, CP, uh, 7 p.m. at the Roselle McDonald. Athletic Boosters is tomorrow night, February 11th at 7 p.m. Uh, student Service Coffee Hour, March 18th, 8.30 a.m. in the Learning Commons here at the high school. At the Middle Senior High School, February 14th, Coffee Hour at 8 a.m. At the Howard School, February 10th through the 14th is the Book Fair. March 4th, State of Matter, Grade 5 PTO sponsored. And March 6th is the Progress Reports. At the Roselle McDonald School, February 11th through the 14th, Scholastic Book Fair, PTO sponsored. February 11th, uh, Miss Money in All Grades Assembly, sponsored by the Rockland Trust Blue Hills Charitable Foundation.
February 26th, Life Touch uh, Spring Group and Individual Picture Day. February 28th, Read Across America, 6 to 7 p.m., PTO sponsored. March 4th, the Rotary Club uh, distribution, uh, dictionary distribution for the grade three. And March 10th, uh, Reading is Fundamental distribution. Uh, at the Spring Street School, March 10th through the 14th is the book fair. And on February 14th is uh, report cards. March 3rd, no school at the Spring Street School uh, due to the election, for the election. Mm -hmm. And March 4th, 5th, and 6th, preschool registration. Our next regular scheduled school, school committee meeting, budget meeting date, will be Monday, February 24th, 2020, 6 p.m. here at the Middle Senior High Learning Commons. And I just want to um, add to that, that our um, technology our video person, cable person, everyone knows Ben Smith, who yep. is probably watching right now <laughs> down, in the, <laughs> down in the studio. They just had, he just had a baby, oh boy. me and David Smith, yeah. and so we're really excited and congratulations, Ben. And um, he's a really cutie and Kim had the picture, so we've decided to show the cutie to everyone. All right. <laughs> congratulations so, to Ben. Yes. 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 Congratulations, yes. Ben. Yes. All right, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night. Aye. <clears throat>